Well, we've had a break from our podcast. We had Thanksgiving. Everybody got to eat good food, didn't yep. we? Yep. We Lots got of to food. eat turkey. Lots that of turkey. Was yummy. Yep. What was your guys' favorite thing about Thanksgiving? Uh, the rolls. You love the rolls? The beef house rolls. Oh, the beef house rolls. They're good. What about you, Addy? The vegetables. The vegetables? I think Phoebe ate a lot of bananas. I like uh, yeah. turkey. You, you said that already. I, I liked my own noodles and my own cheesy potatoes that I personally made. I like so. the own bit cheesy like, I'm gonna potatoes. I'm going to brag, take a minute and brag about my cooking. For I like the cheesy potatoes. Ask what was your favorite thing? The cheesy potatoes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Phoebe, like I said, had bananas. Well, we're back doing our podcast from the Gospel of John. Where are we, Lainey? John chapter 5. Where are we, Addie? You need to speak up, honey. You're too John close. chapter 5. Good job. Where were you like? John chapter 5. All equals right. Two. <laughs> Thank you, Phoebe. Well, you're lucky she thought it was funny because it wasn't correct. <laughs> All right. So, Lane, go ahead and read verses 39 through 47 and make sure we can hear you. Hold on. 39 through 47. You search and skip. The scriptures, because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they say, they that bear witness about me. Yet you have, yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive glory from people, but I know that you do not have the love of God within you. I have in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. How can you believe, receive from one another, and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? Do you do not think that I will accuse you to the Father? There is one who accuses you, Moses, on whom you have set your hope. For if you believe in if you believed in Moses, you would believe in me. For he wrote the, for he wrote of me, but you do not believe his writings. How will you believe my words? All right. So good job, Elaine. Thank you, Phoebe, for your opinion in the middle of the Bible reading. So verse thirty nine, it talks about the Jews searching the scriptures, and um, how you can have eternal life through believing through the scriptures because they talk about who. Who do, they, who do the scriptures talk about? Jesus. That's right. The Old Testament points to Jesus. Jesus talked about how others testified on his behalf. God the Father, John the Baptist, and the prophets pointed to Jesus coming. The Jews that Jesus is talking to right now, they refuse to believe in him. Why do they refuse to believe in him, Maddie? Louder. He was good because he doesn't think he's really real. They don't think he's the real Messiah, that he's really the Son of God, right? All right. So, well, they think that they're better students than anyone, including the Son of God, apparently. But they're blind to see that all their study is fruitless. You guys know what I mean when I say yeah. fruitless? Yeah. What do I mean, Eli? Uh, oh, I know that you don't fruitless. Have- no fruit. No fruit. So they have nothing to, to eat. eat. No, we're not talking about that kind of fruitless. Fruitless in this context means they have nothing to show for what they really believe or for what's really going on within their heart. So um, the scriptures point to Jesus, but they will not believe in him. They miss the point. This shows that reading the Bible alone does not save you. It can show you who God is. You can gain a a, a knowledge in your head about God. But if you refuse to believe it, and if the Holy Spirit doesn't work in your heart when you interact with it, then it will not have any effect in your life. Reading the Bible will not save you. Reading it and believing it is what makes all the difference because that's how Jesus works. Your faith, your belief. It's what he gives you. You understand? It can only come from him. So only Jesus saves. Verse 40, and that this is what we see here. You, yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. Well, Jesus says 
They may have life if they come to him, but they, they say no. What does Jesus mean by life, Eli? What kind of life is he talking about? Take a try. Laney, what's he talking about when he says life? He's talking about living. And, uh, and living it, leaving your spirit and going to heaven. And um, living... What kind of life is it? Is it, uh, does it? Will it end tomorrow or in a couple of years? Nobody knows. No, we do know. That's the whole point of John, the Gospel of John. We do know. Two. You live for... God. You live for... Jesus. Forever. Forever. Thank you. Thank you. He has come to give them life if they believe in him. Well, obviously they're physically alive. They're living and breathing when this book is being written, when this, when this gospel is being written. They are... They, so what's he talking about? He's not talking about physical life. He's talking about what? Not physical, but... Eternal. Okay, but what... what it, it's not spiritual. our... Spiritual. Thank you. Spiritual life. Good job, Elaine. They are dead. These people he's talking to are dead in a spiritual sense. And that's what sin did to Adam and Eve. You guys remember the story of the Garden of Eden? Yeah. They ate that did, fruit. When God said, you eat the fruit, fruit what happens to them, Eli? Their, their clothes ran away. Their clothes, their clothes ran away? No. God. They never had clothes by the way in the beginning. But what happened though? God said, if you eat that fruit, you shall surely eat. You shall sure what what he die. That's right, Addy. He said, You shall surely die. It immediately killed them spiritually. They were separated from God and could not go back to him. The apostle Paul tells us in the book of Ephesians, verse 2, that when we were dead in our trespasses and we were dead in our trespasses and sins. But then God brought us back to life through Jesus. He is the only one who can do that. The Jews, until they believe in Jesus, will never get to be united with God. And they can only come back to God through Jesus. So we all must come to Jesus. He is the only one who can give us eternal life. Verse 41 says, you have a question, Eli? Yeah. What's your question? See, God is the same thing as Jesus. That's right. Jesus is God. Never forget that. A lot of people don't say that, but we know from the Bible that Jesus is God. That's the truth. All right, verse 41, it says, I do not receive glory from people. So Jesus makes it clear that he's not looking for glory from people. He's not there to make people happy. He's not trying to win a popularity contest. He's not vain. He wants to do whose will? No, that's the opposite of what I'm saying. The will of his... Israel! Yeah. The will of his... God's spirit. Okay. Dad? Let's go back through some basic theology here. Remember the Trinity? Yeah. yeah. What did you say, Elon? Uh, Elon. I mean his God, dad. His dad, God the Father. Thank you. Yeah. I don't have to do it now. Remember God the Father, God the Son, and God yeah. the Holy Spirit? He came to do the will of his Father. That's so important for us to remember in the Christian life. Yeah. You, none of you are here to do, you're not here to seek the approval of others, you're here to please God and live for Him. And right here in this passage, Jesus is giving us an example of how we should live. He's making it clear that God is the only one who matters. Everything else needs to take a back seat. Um, sometimes you can get caught up in what other people think of you, you forget about God, you get wrapped up in what other people think. You can be swayed to change your mind about what's right and wrong. The world will tell you something's okay and you can do this. And um, it's okay to do those things. And in some cases, um, it might be okay, but most of the time it's not. That's why we need to constantly ask our... Bless you, Phoebe. Bless you again. That's why we need to constantly ask ourselves, what does God think about this? If you'd be ashamed that God would see you doing this, it doesn't really matter whether or not the world thinks it's okay. You guys understand what I'm saying? Yes. All right, verse 42, it says, but I know that you do not have the love of God within you. So Jesus, with his divine insight, could see that the Jews did not have the love of God within them. If they loved God, they would love Jesus. Say that with me. 
If they love God, they would love Jesus. So, they did not love Jesus. They mistreated him. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to make an example of him when someone undermines their plans, their agenda. What do you like? They didn't like Jesus. They hated Jesus. They hated him. They wanted to make an example of him. This all started because Jesus had healed. Who did he heal? When did all this, all the craziness start? I know, I know, I know. Tell me, Eli. He, the man couldn't walk. The man that couldn't walk. He healed the paralyzed man. That's right. He worked on the Sabbath day. That's right. He worked on the Sabbath. He healed a paralyzed man on the Sabbath. And they were upset about that. They didn't realize that the Son of God is not... Is, is not bound by the Sabbath. He is Lord of the Sabbath. He can do whatever he pleases. But the Jews don't care. They don't believe. They're blinded and they cannot know God in their blindness. There are so many people in the world, even in churches, that are just like these Jews. They're just like these Jews, right, Addy? Yeah. So they are so blind because they think they're so better, they're so much more righteous than anyone else, they have no love for God, and no love for God's people. Well, when we get when we talk to people like this, when we interact with people like this, we need to bring this to their attention. We need to show them this is who Jesus is. This is what Jesus expects. It's like and we need to pray for them. What do we need to do, Addie? Pray for them. We need to pray for them. We need to pray that they would see God's love through the gospel. Verse 43. It says, "I have come in my Father's name. I have come in my Father's name." and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. So, Jesus is here. Excuse you, Phoebe. Jesus is here on behalf of the Father, the one they claim to follow. He is sent from God. He has a message of good news, but they don't want to hear it. They don't want to receive it. Someone else may say they are from God and they will accept him, but Jesus will not be accepted. His message is opposite of what they want. It's a major upset that attacks their view of themselves. They don't want to admit that they're sinners or that they're just as sinful as everybody else. So others may not, um, others may not have that message and pose no threat to the Jews' agenda. The Jews are a proud people. They have always been the people of God, and the Jews that consider themselves to be the spiritual elite are actually spiritually dead. So verse 44, Jesus asked this question, how can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes only from God? That comes from the only God. All right. So, they appear to be religious, and by religious I mean, well, let me ask you this. Adeline, what does religious mean? Don't know? Lenny, what does religious mean? Um... Religious? I don't know. Eli, what is religion? Uh, I don't know. A Ash, tell me what religion means. <coughs> Somebody's got to take a crack at it. He said no. Somebody who has a specific belief? They be yeah, they believe in something bigger than themselves. It's a system. It's an organized system of trying to reach God, trying to reconnect with God. And and that's that's one way of defining it. There's other ways of defining it, but that's the best that we can come up with. So, but anyway, these Jews are religious. They appear to be seeking after God when they interact with one another, but what is really happening is they are looking to seek and they are seeking praise from one another. They only want glory for themselves. They don't give any of the glory, the praise, or the worship to God. The only one who deserves to be worshipped and praised is God. But people, even Christians, even Christians get caught up in this. They go, hey, look at me. They get that attitude. And it's very dangerous. And the reason it's dangerous is because the root of the, the that attitude is called what? When you're, when you're all about yourself, what's that called? Okay, bragging, but what's bragging a form of? Being. I'll give you a hint. It starts with a P. Being. Praying. It's not praying. Praying's good. 
means you're depending on someone else besides yourself. Pride. Very good. Thank you, Ashley. You know, you could have just said it instead of whispering it to her. No, that was that. Anyway, so pride, what, does, does God like pride? Mm -mm. Lainey, does God like pride? Yes, sir. No, he hates pride. He hates pride. Um, and God hates it because it takes away what is rightly his. All that glory and praise and adoration and worship belongs to him. Well, these Jews, and even sometimes we in our world today, try to steal God's glory for ourselves. It takes the focus, it takes the focus off God, and in doing so, lead people away from God. You need to give God all the glory for everything. That is so important. That's right. I'm getting amen from my baby girl. Amen. Preach it. That's right. Good job, Phoebe. All right. So it takes the focus off of God, and in doing everything, it leads people away from God. We need to give God glory. We want to see people do what, Elaine? What do we want that pe to happen to people? For them to live and go to heaven. We want them to go to heaven, so we want them to get saved. We want them to get saved. Did you just say sick? Yeah. We don't want people to get sick. We want people to get saved. But we cannot save them, can we? No. No. Jesus only can. That's right, Eli. Only Jesus can. We can only we can but we can do what? We can point them to Jesus. That's right. We can point them to Jesus. Glorifying in ourselves will not point people to Jesus, but it will point them away from him. What? Point what? Glor glorifying in ourselves will only point people away from Jesus, not to him. Okay. All right. Verse 45, it says, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is no one who accuses... There is one who accuses you, Moses. Who is Moses? Addy, you remember who Moses is? The one... The Speak one, up. The one who... The one who watches the sheep. Laney. The one who got stage fright. No! Well, that's, that's sort of true. Who's Moses, Eli? Do you know? He gave us the what? World. Bible. Well, he wrote a lot of the books know, in the Bible. Know, that's know. true. The phone. A Ten Commandments. That's right. Good job. I knew it was going to be. How'd you know it was the Ten because Commandments? Because of, the, the, because of the, ten, the, the Ten Fingers? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Yes, Moses got the Ten Commandments from God on, on Mount, was it Mount Sinai? Yeah. So anyway, so they set their hope in the law of Moses. So Jesus doesn't even have to say anything um, to the Father. When Jesus talks about Moses, he's talking about the law that the Jews claim to follow, but they in their pride, in their self-righteousness, their lack of humility, their disregard to the Messiah shows that they are in violation of the law. How are they in violation? How are they breaking God's law? Who does the law point to? Jesus. And they don't believe in Jesus, which means they don't believe in the law that Moses wrote. They are in danger of judgment just as much as anyone else. They can't even see it. They won't see it. And they're not alone. There are so many people today who think they know God and are close to God, but they are as far from them as anyone else has been. They are spiritually blind. They have trusted in themselves. They're not trusting in God, the only one who can save them and make them right. They treat the law of Moses as their sword, but it is the sword that will result in their destruction. Eli? They hate Jesus and they don't believe in Jesus. That's right. Now, verse 46, it says, For if you believed in Moses, you would believe in me because he wrote of me. Moses wrote about Jesus. Did you guys know about that? All right, let me read it to you. In Deuteronomy 18, verse 15, Deuteronomy 18, verse 15, it says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you. So from the Jews, from the Hebrews, from your brothers, it is to him you shall listen. That prophet that they're talking about is who? Uh, Jesus. That's right. Uh, you have a question? Yeah. What's your question? You uh, forgot. All right. So we see that Jesus goes way back to the Old Testament, to the book of Deuteronomy, 
Moses makes a prediction. He makes a prophecy that there will be a prophet like him. Jesus is that prophet. Jesus is the one that Moses say the Jews must listen to. The Jews must follow him. But the Jews do not follow him. And they will not acknowledge him as the Messiah. The words they hold to, they, they speak of Jesus, but they won't believe in him. And because they have rejected Jesus, what did we say rejected means? Push away. Push away. Good job, Eli. They're pushing him away because they don't want him. They will not believe. Because they have rejected God's law, they are rejecting God the Father himself. They will never enter his kingdom while they remain this way. And that's exactly what Jesus tells them in the very next verse. Verse 47, which is our last verse, says, But if you do not believe in, the, in his writings, that's the writings of Moses, how will you believe my words? So, the point is very simple. If you reject Jesus, you have rejected the whole Old Testament. Because the whole Old Testament is who, that the old, whole Old Testament is pointing to Jesus. It's always been about him. And they looked forward to the coming of the Messiah for centuries, even millennia. You guys know what millennia means? No. Thousands of years. Thousands of years? That's right. What does a millennia mean? Thousands of years. Thank you. There is in the mid, the, the Messiah is in the midst of them, and they can't see him. That's so sad. It's so tragic. Most of the Jews today still do not acknowledge him as their Messiah. They are still waiting for someone. But there's going to come a day that they will uh, the one they acknowledge as their Messiah will turn out to be their worst nightmare. He won't be Christ. He'll be Antichrist. The devil in, in, in human flesh. What's Antichrist? Someone who is opposite of Jesus. So, and most that believe in him will end up, they'll seal their destruction. So, they will never again be able to turn to God for salvation. And that's why it's so important for us to trust in Jesus right now while we have a chance. Okay. So all you, everyone listening, we all need to put our faith and trust in Jesus. We need to realize we're sinners, that our sin separates us from God. We can't do anything about our sin. We need to believe in Jesus, that he died and rose again, and that he's the Son of God, and that we need to call on him to save us. Because he's the only one who can. And when we do that, he does save us. So, that's why it's so important for us to trust Jesus. We shouldn't put it off because we never know when our time is going to be up to call on him. To call on him to save us. Any questions? No. no. Thoughts? Comments? Nothing? No one has anything no. they'd like to say? No. Yes, Elaine? Um, did, um, did Moses really... Um... Um, write the whole book of John? No, John wrote John. That's why it's called John. <clears throat> Just like John Reese from church. His name is John, yes. All right, anyway. No. Any other questions? No. All right, who's praying tonight? Me, me, me. I, didn't I think you prayed pray. last time. I didn't get to pray. Addie, you can pray. I pray. Can pray. Shh. All right, go ahead. Pray loud, too. Dear Lord, I hope we had a great podcast, everyone. And we have a great night. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.